to go for the second semifinal at the SWAC Women's Soccer Tournament. It's Grambling and Southern. Kickoff moved up about 15 minutes due to the impending storm sweeping in from the west. Matt Peterson with Andrew Driver, the former Houston Dynamo and Hart Midlothian midfielder. This should be a great matchup. Rivals in other sports, rivals on the gridiron and rivals on the soccer field today. Number two seed Grambling against the number three seed Southern. What are you looking forward to in this one? Well, we watched Southern uh, last night, and I thought they were an exciting team to watch. They looked great going forward. Grambling maybe struggled a little bit, weren't as fluid as they would have liked. So it's to see, it'd be interesting to see if Grambling can, Grambling State can come into this this game and perform a little bit better, a little bit more exciting game. But it, it's going to be good. These rivalry games are always good to watch, and looking forward to it. Here we go, underway the second semi-final. Grambling is in white, Southern is in blue. Time adjusted by about 15 minutes. Very windy, very stormy, but no rain at the moment. Early opportunity for Southern. They came out flying last night. A 3-1 win, a dominant first half, and similarly, Andrew Driver, they have the win at their backs for the first half. Yeah, they, they, they started the game exceptionally well. I'll Here's a cross headed straight in the air. A foot race for it. She punches away. Now she stands her line, getting big. Shot from Grambling. Not the cleanest of efforts. And it's picked up there by Sydney Bellamy. It's oh, another good start to the game, isn't it? And it's the first time we've seen the team against the wind actually create the first opportunity. Grambling stay really working the ball well, just getting the ball into the danger area. And yeah, I think that, I think Grambling State's game yesterday took them to the second half to get the first shot on target, already creating things. Bodes well for the rest of the game. Out to midfield. Grambling throwing. Looks like we've had a bit of a kick clash problem. Southern are, I think, in their training, training jerseys with the numbers, the the kit person's done a great job in getting those numbers on. <laughs> well, they, this can happen. This is very, very common in a tournament. I had a I, situation a couple of years ago. You, you go first, you're the former no, player. No, I've, I've been a professional <laughs> soccer player and it's happened to us in a game as well. So <laughs> these things definitely happen. Well, let's, uh, the, the one that comes to mind for me a couple of years ago, Conference USA Tournament. The game was postponed by about 30 minutes because both teams came to the field with green jerseys. <laughs> it was University of North Texas against UNC Charlotte's, both with green jerseys. And the funny thing about the story, Andrew, is if you looked at Conference USA social media before the match, they tweeted a picture, both women in the picture were wearing green. So you could say, <laughs> this could have been predicted. Your social media post showed green on green. I don't know how no one saw it coming. That is funny. But I tell you, things like that, though, as a team, bring you together. I bet they had a right a laugh about it before the game. They're putting their own numbers onto the, the jerseys. So in that moment, a couple of years ago, Conference USA, I believe it was North Texas, had to go back to the hotel to get the jerseys and come back. It led to the 30-minute postponement. The one thing I hope is that the ladies haven't tried to take it out on us and just change their numbers around, so we're going to butcher everyone's correct names. Offer a line. Sydney Bellamy makes the climb. And let's just say, taping's not easy. We just did our own taping of the board here. We're at the outdoor press box in the elements. Winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour. So short notice, they did well. In terms of the game, where I'm really looking forward to, is I mentioned yesterday in the Grambling State game, it was um, Adriana Pratt is an outstanding defender but she sits so deep she's the, the voice behind the other defender she sits like five yards deeper and i just thought yesterday if the, the team they're playing could exploit those wide areas you would get a chance to get in behind into this situation here almost but i do feel like southern the southern jaguars have the players in those situ those areas to really hurt the team Southern Grambling meant once this year in Baton Rouge. Grambling State won one to nothing. 
Long throw in. Flicked on and clear. And Carlin Judge had the goal for Grambling. Both these teams enter the tournament in good form. Southern on a five match unbeaten run. Four wins and a draw, including last night's 3 1 win against UAPB. Oh, wow. For a kick. This game started well, hasn't it? I think both teams really going for it on either side that time. Whitney just winning the free kick down the side by just using her pace to try and test the defender, but. Southern having a good, a little bit of possession and now Grambling State. Restart from the left, bounces past the goalkeeper, but the win keeps it in play unbelievably for Sydney Bellamy. No, don't take anything for granted. If you haven't watched this tournament this week with the wind, every ball in the box is a bit of an adventure. The goalkeepers need full concentration. It's an adventure unless you're the goalkeeper where it's a nightmare. Two high scoring teams, Southern scored 27 goals this season, have conceded 27. Grambling has scored 37, conceded 26. So we said last night, this is the high scoring side of the bracket. On the uh, top side, Jackson State has gone through more of the defensive side. There's a good cross from the left, Sydney Bellamy there for Southern. Look at this, this is what we want to see there, almost end to end stuff. Good, the goalkeeper, Bellamy, as soon as she got the ball, is looking up to try and play forward. It just skipped ahead of um, the, the midfielder who was looking for the reception, but both teams, first, first thing, get the ball in, let's go play. But just before that as well, you saw Bugs getting into that left wing area where we see her so good, she's so fast. She's up and down all day. State trying to get back to the championship game. They have been to the championship game three of the last four years, losing in penalties each of the last three, or each of the last three appearances, last year to Prairie View A&M, which won on its home fields. Justin Wagger, the head coach, had three weeks to recruit when he retook the job in July, had left the program, had moved his family to Utah. One of his children had medical needs, so they Went to Utah, child is doing much better. It's great to hear from him. Took the job at Grambling, three weeks to recruit, got five players in the transfer portal, and here they are as the number two seed in position with the win tonight to get back to the championship game for the fourth time in five years. Okay, it seemed like he was absolutely delighted to be back, wasn't he? This is, he's, this is like his baby to, to to come back to try and develop this program that he's done so much for and I don't think he would have been absolutely delighted with the performance but we've already seen him the start this this game here it's on here early chance wide of the near upper corner Imogen Fowler the senior from Derby England with the game's best chance so far yeah I was just just about to say they're looking so much sharper in the past they're way more free throwing football than we saw them in the entire game yesterday and that was a real good run from Image and Fowler. We're already seeing Kratis on the ball as well, just all linking up. And yeah, it looks like Grambling State really means business here. Sydney Bellamy with the goal kick. Completely different feel already for Southern. Last night they were the aggressors. UAPB was just kind of hanging on. But Grambling's been the better team here in the first eight minutes. And this is the matchup I think everyone is looking forward to see. Long shot, slightly bobbled, but then recovered quite well. Yeah, I was just about to mention Lonnie Mulligan versus Ariana Bugs. I think those two against each other. It's going to be two really athletic girls, great players going against each other. It's going to be a battle. Honestly, if I'm if I'm the Southern Jaguars coach, I potentially think about bringing Mulligan over to the other side where she can be more effectual. Last night it went extra time for Grambling. We'll see if that has any of impact today. Having to go 110 minutes. Beatrice Credis scored in the 96th minutes. To beat Alcorn last night.
The bands in the background, Prairie View A&M hosting Alcorn State. Match on ESPNU, just off in the distance at Panther Stadium. What's the chances of that game last in the distance? Well, they might have to, some rain to play through. They're kicking off in about 35 minutes. Busy night on the hill here in Prairie View, Texas. For Southern last night, Alyssa Terry scored her first goal of the season. Alayla Jackson made it 2 0. And Gifty Tor, after a hard working night, made it 3 1 after Madison Hernandez had a free kick goal for UAPB. And that was one thing we were struck by last night the amount of players used by Southern, how quickly Jeremy Fonno, the head coach, would go to his bench early and often. A very deep team, Southern, with 35 active players. Yeah, and it worked, didn't it? Um, they just looked fresh throughout the game. Uh, Gifty Tor being a goal scorer, being one of those players who came off the bench and was very effectual as the game went on. We know Grambling's had some injury issues over the season, so they're not as fresh. You would imagine it's going to be a lot of harder work for them. We, in fact, we saw last night Imogen Fowler had cramp at one point. So they, they have players that are having to put a lot of effort in, and it's a, it's a big shift, especially the second game in two days. Throw-in. On this near side, 12 substitutes lose by Southern last night. Some as few as three minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, 10 minutes. So good sprinkling of rolls. Only three players played the full 90 for Southern, including the goalkeeper. Out on the far side of the field. Unlucky, yeah, real good play there from Whitney. She's tried to pace, looks like she was gonna lose it, but she's so shifty. She's got, um, she can change direction so quick. She just put her foot on the ball, pulled it back, and yes, Grand State looking really good on the ball today. Like this is probably one of the best performances against the wind we've seen that in in this tournament so far. We yeah, take, taking nothing away from Texas Southern, Andrew. It was tough sledding for them the entire second half of the match just prior. Oh yeah, it was difficult. The second half came and they really struggled to get out of their own half, didn't they? Long distance strike. Well covered by Sydney Bellamy. She's been very busy and very sure-handed here in the first 15 minutes. I don't know if the, the weather's actually shifted a little bit, maybe across the pitch instead of from right to left as we look at it. It does feel like a swirling wind. I hope no one's like playing a, a sweepstake on how many times we talk about the wind because I feel like we've mentioned it so many times, but it is truly has made such a big difference to these games, hasn't it? Yes, we do not want to beat the dead horse, but fair play to the players and the coaches. We want to put in perspective what they're trying to do and the difficulties of the win. So while we might be talking about it too much, every pass, every play, every is goalkeeping decision is affected by it. So we're trying to bring that to the audience. Yeah. Good battle in midfield. Good. Fowler earns a free kick. Imogen Fowler, the Derby England had a good chance. He's dealt with an injury late in the season. Starts tonight, she started last night. Yeah, she showed flashes last night of her ability. We know, we know the ability from watching the tournament last year, but today already she's got herself in good position and if, why not play the ball down on the right hand side here to Reese Scott, she's in acres of space in the box. Four in the wall for Sydney Bellamy. Reese Scott wide open on the right edge of the box. Long strike deflected. And it will roll out for a corner kick. That could have gone anywhere, couldn't it? When he's traveling at such pace and the defense put the head on it, it just all it takes is it's a just Short corner, hit to the back post, headed in! Grambling jumps in front from the corner kick. And it looked like Mackenzie Rastatter. Another inventive celebration. They went for the baseball home run this time, but what a ball into the box it was. A lovely little words corner kick. Well coached Grambling State. We know how well coached they are. They've, they've taken the, the short corner. It looked like 
it's Samantha Diaz who's down injured and just maybe under hit the pass. But they played the one two, the ball into the box was magnificent, right on the button and headed home with authority. Samantha Diaz will receive treatment. As she receives treatment, we'll take a commercial break. It's the SWAC Digital Network. Don't go anywhere. Grambling State leading Southern, one nothing. A goal from Mackenzie Rastatter. One to nothing. Second goal of the season for Mackenzie Rastatter out of SoCal High School in Aptos, California, near Santa Cruz. A light, what, bright start to this game. That's just a great header, wasn't it? She, she, we've seen uh, uh, many corners in the last couple of days. Not many have been attacked, but that, she has just attacked that ball so well. And then paid homage to the, to the Houston Astros with the baseball celebration. Well, according to head coach Justin Wagger, she's played more games than anyone in Grambling State soccer history. 73 appearances in her career. That's her third career goal. Bending ball. What a ball. Oh. Say, and it's cleared for a corner. That ball was so good from Liz Lisbeth Aguero. Curtis, I think she didn't think he was going to get to it, but if she'd have just run the original trajectory of the run, it would have fallen absolutely perfect for Curtis. Similar to the ball hit by Alexis Sanchez, led to the opening goal in the prior game. Yeah, it was just that little bend around the defender, let the wind hold it up a little bit and run onto it. But Kratis, I think, maybe didn't think it was coming to the direction. Corner kick taken. First shot blocked, second one as well. Southern will try and break. Good challenge in midfield. Adriana Pratt, first team all-conference selection in the SWAC. Excellent. Uh, defending that from Pratt, wasn't it? Really, really good. She reads the game so well. Never looks like she's having to sprint or anything. Then she just came across there, saw the danger, and put her foot in and made a good ta good tackle. But Southern Jaguars are a little bit shell-shocked, aren't they? Their the performance last night was so good. I think they, coming into this game, they would have been brimming with confidence, but to go behind against this Grambling State team, they're going to have to really pick themselves back up. Over the top. Especially after Grambling State went the extra time yesterday as well. You'd think they would have been the ones that maybe came out second into this into the, the this game a little bit sluggish, you know, like a hangover from the game last night, but they've started the game on absolute fire. Throw it into the goal scorer. Rastetters cross is blocked. Oh, nice. Clever skill there from Imogen Fowler. We better keep you up in the middle of the park. A la Thierry Henry. Ooh, good defending. It was slipped through. Good block on the edge of the box. It's on against and in the back of the net. Beatrice Kretzis. Bellamy got a hand to him, but could not keep it out. And Grambling State have two in the first half. Well, when we spoke to Justin Wager, Wager yesterday, he said, watch out 
for Kratos' feet. He says she's going to have great feet around the box. In, th in this situation, the ball's fallen for her. She's cut inside. She's, she's zigzagged a little bit and then onto her left foot. And what a accomplished finish into the bottom corner. And it's nothing less than what Gramlin State's deserved. They've been absolutely outstanding to start this game. And opportunistic from Kretis as well. Most of the work was done on the build-up by Carlin Judge. She slalomed through the defense. She got to the top of the box. And then it was perfect timing from Kretis arriving on the scene first to react. Yeah, and it was actually the second time Carlin Judge had actually had some nice footwork. She'd lost it a little bit earlier, but she just kept the momentum and kept at it. And when, when you have that work rate and you try try the little tricks, sometimes they come off and it fell nicely for Kretis. And what a finish. A surprising scoreline. Grambling is the two seed, but I thought after yesterday's game, Southern had a good chance to win tonight. They were the most impressive team, in my opinion, last night of all four games. Grambling went to extra time, not a typical Grambling performance, pushed to the brink against Alcorn State. But I think that's what, if you go back to last night, how well Alcorn State actually played, because this Grambling State seems like a different team, but Alcon frustrated them the whole way through. They played very tight, really well coached, and they were unlucky not to get something out of the game. Restart from midfield. Rastetter heads away. I think the one thing that's going for the, the, lady, the lady Jaguars is they are so good going forward that it won't take much for this team to start firing again and get back into the game. And they have plenty of time. If there was any team we watched yesterday that looks capable of going on a streak and scoring two, three, four goals, this is one of them. They have an hour left to score two goals. Rastatter heads away. Clearance from Fowler. Yeah, it almost feels like it was a wake-up call for Grambling. Yesterday was their first game of the tournament. Maybe the caginess, the nerves that are very common for any team in a knockout form. And then they woke up today saying, Hey, we can't come out like that. We're one game away from the final. If I'm not mistaken, were they similar to that last year? And that was the first game a bit of a slog, and then the second game they performed really well. Yeah, they beat Jackson State 2-1 in the quarterfinals last year. Yeah, because I recall that like, they just didn't get get going in that game last year, and then yeah, they did. They fell behind. You're absolutely right. And Lee Brunson scored in the fourth minute for Jackson State and they scored two late goals. Yeah, I remember that then. They, they, it was a bit of a struggle. They looked like they were going out at one point. They, they, they did just enough. And then in the second game, they played Alabama A&M and they, they looked outstanding. It looked like they had a chance of winning the whole tournament. Well, they yeah. obviously did. They got two penalties in the final. Lindsay Jai Simi in the 77th minute and then Miranda Urbizu in the 84th minute for the come from behind victory last year in the quarterfinals. When you look at that over the, in the last few years, they've obviously got to the final. They've, they've been one of the most consistent teams. It's funny how teams will be like that. They can, they go to tournaments and they, they don't perform, but they still find ways to, to find victories. Like last night was an absolute slog, wasn't it? It was. It could have gone either way. They had to. They really had to put the effort in to get the victory, but they found the way in the end. Well, think of the near misses for the goal scorer, Mackenzie Rastetter. Over 70 games, most in Grambling history. She's never made the NCAA tournament. She's had three chances, three penalty shootout losses, where if they win the shootout, they're in the tournament. She wants to go all the way this year and finally play in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it'd be a, a great send-off, wasn't it? Well, she's played a, played a part tonight, hasn't she, by getting that opening goal. Southern on the ropes. To a great season, an emphatic win last night, 3-1, suddenly behind 2-0. Southern has not tasted defeat since October 14th against Alabama A&M, a 2-0 loss. Back to Madison Covey-Taylor, one of the first recruits when Grambling Went back to Justin Wagger and he returned to the program. He did not have a goalkeeper. So the freshman from Lodi, California, one of his first recruits, and she's been excellent. You just feel like Southern needs to get Lonnie Mulligan into the game. Here she is now on the ball, 
right at, in time, but she's just not getting any space, is she? She's not getting any opportunity to, to get and utilize that pace. And completely different. She's more central tonight. There's the cross from the right. It's out for a goal kick. She was isolated in the wide areas. We saw her starting runs with her heels on the touchline. No, I think she's more central there because she's just trying to find get into the, into the game. She she is playing out on the right hand side, but she's she's just trying to drift into get a touch on the ball. When you're a wide player and you haven't seen it, it's so frustrating. But she's she's out there on the right hand side against against Ariana Bugs. You, you, I would honestly try and get her out onto the left hand side, just find any way to get the ball into her feet, get her to start running at the defense with a pace. Here she is on the ball, surrounded by two. We saw her last night when she, it took her 20 minutes to get in the game, but when the ball did come to her, God, it was incredible the pace she had, the turn of speed. Grambling looking for a third in this first half. Booming clearance out to midfield, kept in by Bugs. Layoff here, Southern on the break. Good defending. Near the corner flag, kept in play. Cross, clear. That's just a different look tonight for Lonnie Mulligan. That time was a cross. But like every time she got the ball last night, she would run at the back line. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think there was anything wrong with that. I think it was a good ball into a dangerous area. But actually saying that, the Southern Jaguars, they've done they've been good the last five, 10 minutes. They're starting to creep their way back into the game a little bit. Here comes Gifty Tour. She was excellent last night, rewarded with the goal. We saw her in the wide areas. We saw her in the center forward role. She comes in in what looks like a center forward role. Trying to bring life to this team. It'll be a free kick here, one on the far sideline. Everyone back for Grambling, all but three forward for Southern. You don't need another one, get the third one forward. That falls in the box, and I'm with you. You're down two goals. You don't need three back in midfield with no one to defend. If there's no one to defend, yeah. Now a chance on the break for Grambling. Aria Whitney pushing forward. No one stepping to Whitney. Whitney to the box. Whitney trying to turn the corner. Good defending. It was desperate, but effective from Southern. Very, very good defender, but Whitney just running the pace. She, she just maybe, as soon as she got into the box there, you just wanted her to pull the trigger, didn't you, on her left foot. She just took that one extra touch that took it too far, but she's also got electric pace and looks so good when she's running with it like that. But you could see the willingness and the desire from Grambling and the awareness. There was a ball at midfield, two jumped to deny the cross, they blocked the cross and they're on from midfield on that counter attack. Yeah, and they were streaking forward, weren't they? Three or four bodies trying to, to join Whitney. I'd say Whitney's so unlucky. She's done so well to get into the box. Just, it would have been good to see her to take a, take a shot. Fowler standing over this free kick. Ariana Bugs, a short option. Grambling leading 2 nothing with 20 minutes left in the first half. She will go for goal. Slices past the far post. Not bad we hit from Imogen Fowler. Just, as you said, uh, out off the, the right-hand side of the boot, just sliced away. One change for Grambling. Nia Harley comes in, the sophomore from Charlotte. Sydney Bellamy with the goal kick. And look at the energy right off the bench. It's She's Harley. Gonna She's gonna Out comes the goalkeeper. Oh, the shot is oh. in. First touch off the bench for Nia Harley, and it's 3-0 to Grambling. How about that for a first touch? <laughs> she literally just walked onto the pitch, and it was like slow motion to run. But for her to finish it like that for your first touch is incredible. Absolutely Incredible. I was thinking she was just going to knock it past the goalkeeper and, and run in, but she's just hit it first time and she could not have got a better purchase on the on the delivery. And 
Unbelievable from Gramlin State. Is this the same team as we saw yesterday? It started with just a simple goal kick from Sydney Bellamy, not her longest effort, but the header one was Beatrice Credis. It's a header right into the path of Nia Harley that leads to the opening goal, or this third goal. Oh, what a way to introduce yourself into the game, right? And there was just no reaction from Southern. The defenders did not take Harley too seriously. The only one that responded was Sydney Bellamy. She comes off her line. Not enough awareness from Southern on the goal kick. Yeah, I think I think it was one of those where you're not expecting any danger from it. It's, it's got in, you expect your defender to come over and cover, but no one really took the initiative over than Bellamy. But the thing that was so impressive for me was how Nia Harley's just put that into the back of the net. It's such a difficult skill when you're running full speed. You know, you, you're kind of thinking you're going to go collide with the goalkeeper, so there's a danger of getting hurt. It's all happening so fast, but for her to just hit it so well into the back of the net, very impressive. <laughs> what a she's absolutely what an introduction to the game. She she's is again in the middle of it. <laughs> no. She needs to calm down. There's a long way to go. Cross to the top of the box. This has been stunning in this first half. It's like a, an occasion where Nia Halley just needs to just go to the coach and say, I've done my bit. <laughs> I've done enough. I'll come back on the bench for 20 minutes. Third goal of the season for Nia Harley to go with three assists. She's on an every game starter, nine starts. But we saw her flying around. That was her second appearance today. It's, it's, it's nine starts, but if she's making that, off coming off the bench and making that kind of impact, that's what you want, isn't it? When you can rely on players coming off the bench to make a difference, it's huge when you're a coach. She's what? one of those transfers from University of Illinois, Chicago. I'm just, I'm just absolutely shocked that the, the difference in this Grambling State team. Absolute full credit to the coach, full credit to the players. They've just, the improvement is fast. Whoa. That's well hit and just past the post. Great effort. Layla Jackson not far off the mark. Well hit. Did you see the action on that ball? It was like a a David Becker, a Kevin De Bruyne free kick. Absolutely almost pinpoint to the top corner, but it was traveling. It looked like it was heading to the top corner from the minute it, it left her boot. And that for, was an opportunity to get back in the game for Southern. For using baseball analogies, Andrew, it was like the invisible from Christian Javier the other night for the Astros in the no-hitter. <laughs> Coming in at 92, looking like 102. Why is that? Because you just can't see it leave his hand. Well, they say with Christian Javier, it looks like it's rising. Physically, it can't rise the way the baseball works. But it's that late movement. It kind of disappears. Oh, okay. And pitches normally go down. But this had a spin rate. They kind of brought it flat. It looks like it's coming up, but it's not really. But it, yes, then that free kick was pretty similar because the pace of it, it looked like it was getting faster. There's another good shot. Another shot from distance. Madison Covey Taylor has it well covered. Better though from Southern Southern, isn't it? Much, much better. You could you could go 3-0 down and just give up, but they've they've they 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 are not They're gonna keep going. And we've mentioned if there is a team that has if there's any team in this tournament that can come back from this situation, this Southern team is the one because they they look like they could got goals in them. We saw that last night with three great goals. Good delivery, and not the cleanest of connection from Deja Griffin, tried to flick it to the back post. It's out for a goal kick, and a change coming for each team. A break for Deja Griffin. For Southern. seen the, the eyes of our cameraman start to panic because the sun comes out <laughs> for the sunset. The contrast is all gonna go. <laughs> White balancing on the fly at its best. <laughs> Great pictures all week here in Prairie View. It's actually started to calm down a little bit, hasn't it, here? Lovely evening. Kyra Reeves just came on for Deja Griffin. 
Layla Loring came on for Imogen Fowler. Switch of fields, right off the bench from Kyra Reeves, the transfer from Missouri. Lonnie Mulligan, first team ball conference, transfer from Ole Miss. And they're really executing the game plan while Lonnie Mulligan's out there near the sideline. There's two defenders right next to her. When we spoke to Coach Wager yesterday, he said, look, to, look for that matchup. He said he was excited to see Bugs play against, directly against Lonnie Mulligan. He said the two are the better players in the, in the league. And we, we haven't seen it as of yet. I'd like to see both of them in full flight just to see. It's gonna be great competition. Far side throw in for Mulligan. 13 minutes left in the opening half. Three, nothing. Grambling leading Southern. A stunning score line. Long throw in, headed straight in the air by the goal scorer, Mackenzie Rastatter. She scored in the 14th minute, then just four minutes later, Beatrice Credis and then Nia Harley, the third. I believe Harley did come off the bench tonight. I don't think we saw her earlier. I think she literally came in. That was her first seconds and first touch of the match. Yeah, literally first touch. Not a bad one, is it? So I'm saying she just needed to drop the mic and go back to the bench. <laughs> yes, that's it for me. You're welcome. <laughs> Maybe put me back in the second half if you need me. There's a re-entry then. Save me for the final on Sunday. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Away from Rastatter. Out for a throw in. And I'm really trying to put this into context. Southern's performance last night, Southern's form entering the tournament and the wind. You have three things that are surprising us. How good Southern looked last night, their recent record, and the fact that Grambling scored three goals going into the win in the first half. Yeah, it's, I, I just wouldn't have predicted it, no matter how many times you asked, asked me. Obviously, Grambling have, have turned up the level a, a, a few notches, and Southern just haven't really got themselves going, but to be three, three goals down, and Grambling State have just They've been deserving of them as well. They've taken their opportunities when they've come. But yeah, you're right. You just wouldn't predict it. You wouldn't have predicted it having watched both of these teams yesterday. And taking nothing away from Texas Southern, but they had the same situation going into the wind about 30 minutes before this game kicked off, and they couldn't really get over midfield consistently. No, it was a struggle. But I, I, actually, in actual, I think in their defense, the wind maybe has just died down that little bit. It started swirling a little bit less. So the, the conditions have changed, but yeah, you, Texas Southern really struggled in the second half to get out of their, their own territory, but Grambler State have just been outstanding. The coach has to be absolutely delighted with the way his teams come out in this game. Beatrice Cretis goes to the bench, replaced by Abby Dickens, sophomore midfielder from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Free kick. Rastatter commits the foul. That was Victoria Thomas on the turn. We're seeing more of her tonight. She's a sophomore from New Orleans, wearing number nine for the Southern Jaguars. Restart, immediately cleared. Also kudos to the referee. How many fouls we had in the game so far? Nine. Nine. It doesn't seem like nine. I, does it? I, I agree. The, the game, game has got a good flow to yeah, it. Yeah, it's been going the whole way. No, no yellow cards. Just letting them play. It's been excellent to watch. Sean Cowett is the referee. Jordan Gray, Wes Cowett, Holden Gregory, the other officials. Two brother teams refereeing the weekend. 
for two, bro two brother teams or four brothers? Might be father son with Sean and Wes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a, you can't go there, Mark. <laughs> you don't see any age difference? <laughs> You're only insulting someone on that one. Even if you say brothers, then <laughs> I think Sean looks a bit elder than Wes. There's no taking that one back. Here comes the corner. Southern needs something here. Great ball. Great ball. It's right in front of goal and. Hit wide, so close, right in front of the face of goal. But Gramley did enough to keep it out of the back of the net. Oh, it was just there begging for someone to get on the end of it, wasn't it? And if Southern score there, then just before half time, the nerves for Gramley State start to come. The, the momentum shifts instantly. If if Southern can get a goal before half time, you'll, I think you'll see this game completely change. Suddenly it goes from Grambling State to just cruising to starting to have that little thing in their mind like how we're gonna how we're gonna blow this. It's gonna bounce wide of goal. Restart coming from Madison Covey Taylor. The Bayou Classic hasn't disappointed yet, has it? It's been a good game. Oh, nice turn. Rivals. In every sport, especially on the gridiron, they meet New Orleans every year. All grambling here. But the, um, it's not called Mercedes-Benz anymore. What, what's the stadium called? Is it not Little Caesars now? Good question. The Caesar Superdome. Pizza, Good pizza. <laughs> So how many $5 hot readies for you this week? <laughs> Please tell me single digits. <laughs> Here's the restart from midfield for Grambling. Bouncing in the area, picked up by Sidney Bellamy. It's just um, amazing how the these two games to the, today compared to yesterday. Yesterday was a little bit tighter. Everyone was a bit nervous. You could see the, the players weren't playing with total freedom. And then today for the semifinals, all the games we've watched so far, they've just been end to end. It's been entertaining football. Just you see the confidence of both teams are starting to grow. In midfield, something here for Southern. Five minutes left in this first half. Grambling leading three nothing. Madison Covey Taylor from Lodi, California, true freshman goalkeeper. Hunting into the wind. Good defending from Bugs. Slows down Kari Price. Ooh, strong tackle. Free kick to Grambling. One here by Kennedy Moore, senior from Marietta, Georgia.
Just a complete reversal of fortunes for Southern. Last night flying in control, in the lead, chance after chance. But Grambling, credit to them, despite the win in their face, sees the momentum early with the initiative. Here's the restart floating over the goal for a goal kick to Southern. For Grambling State, it's almost as if playing against a more open team is better. The Alcorn yes. State kind of played in a similar manner to them and they just struggled to break them down. Southern obviously back their offense. They want to they want to play open, expansive football. And Grambling have just, it seems to suit Grambling. They've just been the, the stronger team. They've created the, the better opportunities and Southern have actually been quite quiet going forward. You're right, it was a physical game, a lot of corner kicks yesterday, a lot of offside. Grambling was offside seven times. Alcorn played that really good high line and could not break through until Beatrice Credit scored in the 96th minutes. Now Grambling looking for a fourth. Flag stays down. Thought she may have come from an offside position. Harley clips it up. It's alive in the box. Whistle blown. Sydney Bellamy came bravely. Contact from a Grambling player. Maybe Monique Alvarez there. Free kick to Southern. Cross from the right, nobody there. The energy that Southern had last night just hasn't really been here in the first half. Oh, and I'm just thinking as well, we've not seen as much as Armstrong on the right the right back area. She's been fairly quiet. It's the, the, the influential players for Southern that you were looking to have a big night, that had a big night last night, just haven't had the opportunities to get into the game yet. That's a nice turn. Beautiful from Victoria Thomas, chance here. Inside the box, Bugs recovers well. Shoulder challenge, they will play on, and it's cleared. That's just so, so good from Bugs. Like the recovery speed is one thing in itself. Then to, to go shoulder to shoulder with a player that's clearly very strong. I think she was up against Carrie Price, and she's just done enough what you want from a defender. She's, and then the danger's just gone. But it looked like a second it was going to be a, a real good opportunity for Southern. Again, we talked about the awards. Bugs did not make first or second team all swag. Very surprising. There's only a few that can make the team, so that not everyone can be rewarded, but she's been one of the best players we've seen all week. Yes, yeah, she's been outstanding, but you, you also take into account Armstrong's a, a fullback for Southern. She's been outstanding. And in the, the game previous, um, we saw, sorry, the name's escaping me a little <laughs> bit, but she was outstanding as well. Pinder, sorry, <laughs> I found it. Yeah, Pinder was outstanding. The envelope is open. <laughs> yes, sorry, Pinder man. was really good in the prior game. She was outstanding. Um, so there is players, but my, my point being in a long way around of saying it is there's some really, really good um, wide defensive players. I think we've seen in every game there's been someone that can stand out. Long throwing. Well, Grambling State does win. We think about Sunday the best defense in the league against one of the best offenses in the league. Offense will meet defense. Jackson State has not allowed a goal in this competition. Only two goals in the regular season. Grambling a high scoring team. Halftime in the second semifinal. A very surprising scoreline taking nothing away from Grambling but Southern looked really good last night, the number three seed. These rivals, and after 45 minutes, Grambling with a three nothing lead goals from Mackenzie Rastatter, Beatrice Credis, and Neil Hartley, your thoughts, Andrew Driver. Oh, great game, Grambling State have to be absolutely delighted. They've been outstanding. They came out the blocks very, very fast, and then they capitalized on it. Southern still aren't out of it. They've got to be confident. They've got the players to get themselves back into it. They just need to get an early goal in the second half.
Half, halftime score, Grambling three, Southern nothing. You're watching the SWAC Women's Soccer Championship on the SWAC Digital Network.
Set for the second half in the semifinal. Grambling leading three, nothing over Southern. And we're underway. Southern with a uniform change at halftime. Maybe that's just the life they need. The Jaguars in the blue and yellow. Grambling in white. And what changes can Southern make to get back in this one? They're just going to play like they played last night. Just, just grow into the game slowly. There's still a long, long way to go. Get a goal early, and you, you're in with a chance. All clipped over the top. Out comes Sydney Bellamy. 14th minute goal, Mackenzie Rastatter opened the scoring for Grambling. Beatrice Kretis in the 18th minute, just four minutes later, made it two. Nia Harley right off the bench, seconds after entering her first touch of the match, was a goal. 27th minute, three nothing Grambling. Southern won three one last night against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Here comes Grambling the other way between these two rival schools, Grambling and Southern. You can already see Southern getting the ball into more dangerous areas, getting the ball to, to Mulligan in behind, the, in behind the, the front two. Victoria Thomas getting on the ball a little bit as well. In midfield. Good pressure from Southern. Free kick at the center circle. Much better energy in the first two minutes since halftime. Gorgeous backdrop here. The sun is set behind us. Looming clouds, the storms have held off for now. Ball in the box and it's clear. Alyssa Romero with the clearance. Jackson State awaits in Sunday's final. What a ball, great ball. Good first touch. Soft delivery is cleared. That's where you want to see Armstrong though, isn't it? Running down that right-hand side. She, I know she's a, a right back, but you want to get her forward. And it was a great ball into her. Just split the defense, get into those, those, that right wing area. Overlapping all day. Courtney Armstrong, first team ball conference, senior from Moreno Valley, California. Throw-ins headed away. Over the top for Beatrice Credis. Good energy from the Jaguars. Anaya Clark, another first team all conference selection for Southern. There's a delivery and it's clear. Well, this is how they, they played last night, isn't it? They've started this second half so much more on the front foot, more energy going forward. I think they've produced more in this second half already more than they did in the first half. And clear. They, obviously, they've not had any real clear cut chances yet, but they're asking questions of this Grambling State defense. One in midfield. Good work from Aria Whitney. Credis lays it back for Carlin Judge. She took a gap year last year after her senior year of high school, first year in, in college soccer, first team all conference out of Pflugerville, Texas. Recruited late by Justin Wagger, the head coach. He originally had recruited her and then left the program, returned and brought her in. She's a first team all conference pick. Headed away by Miramauer Mesa, senior from Washington, D.C. Ariana Bugs, been a pleasure to watch her all week. She throws it in here. 2v2 in the corner. Still in play here for Grambling. Credis. Good tracking back. Imogen Fowler wins it back for Grambling. Long sliding challenge out for a corner kick. Yeah, good work from Imogen Fowler, wasn't it? It looked for a second like 
Lonnie Mulligan was going to get the chance to, to find some space to, to run into, but Emerson Fowler's work rate gets the ball back, and look, you see a corner kick for Grambling State off a bit of hard work. Imogen Fowler, Derby, England native, takes this corner kick for Grambling. Low to the near post. Bouncing near the edge of the box. And now space for the Jaguars on the counter attack. Into the feet of Deja Griffin. She has to go 1v3. And Bugs tracking back diligently to win it. Look at the space here now on the left hand side. It has opened up for the Jaguars. Just harassing in midfield. That's been the game plan for Grambling. Excellent work there from Kirsten Hale, the senior from Houston. Felt like every time the Jaguars try to break through, there's Grambling player right there. Yeah, I think on that occasion though. Southern tried to play a little bit of the hard ball. They could have easily just gone out to the left-hand side. Just sometimes the e passing the ball makes life easier for everyone. Just you, this, this Grambling State, we know they're so strong through the midfield and defensively. You have to go from side to side. You have to try and move them. You need to move them defensively. You need to try and dis disjoin the, sh the shape. You have to make them move out of position. Restart here for Grambling. Seven minutes into the second half. Bugs slides over. Southern throw in on this near side. One change for each team. Seven minutes into the second half. It's a break for Samantha Diaz of Grambling. Replaced by Elizabeth Aguero, who's dealt with shin splints this season, missed about half the year. Surya Nero comes in for Southern, replacing Alyssa Terry. Surya Nero, senior from Magnolia, Texas, just north of Houston. Again, 35 active players on this Southern team. It's a deep roster. And they're going to need as many as possible tonight to get back into this game. Rastatter will restart. Already nine players used off the bench, 20 in total for Grambling this evening. Really good turning from Thomas there. Head up all the time, looking for the pass to go forward. And that's what Southern needs now. They need to be direct. They need to get ball forward. Try and find any space in behind this Grambling State defense. Mulligan. Mulligan with some space. Tries her luck, it will not trouble Madison Covey Taylor. Much better though, much better from Southern. Just nice little passes, the ball falls to Mulligan. You, you kind of like seeing a run at the defenders in those situations, but you don't mind having a shot test the goalkeeper for the first time. I do wonder how much the back to back has affected Southern. First time this season, either team has played on back to back days. Exerted energy in the win last night. No time to recover between games. You would have thought it would have been an advantage for Southern, wouldn't you? Just because, one, they didn't go to extra time and they have such a big squad. Bug steps in front. Release to the left side. Throw in conceded by Reese Scott. It was Alayla Jackson. The forward run she scored last night for Southern. Cross comes in from the left. 
Feels like Grambling's had an answer for every delivery from the wide areas tonight from Southern as the flag is raised. Yeah, the defensively they've just been absolutely fantastic, haven't they? Adriana Pratt, we, we saw you know she's the she's the leader defensively, and their shape's been great. They've just had no space for these Southern players to find, and just an outstanding defensive performance so far from the Grambling State team. Fowler. Good space for the Jaguars. Good defending. Rowan conceded. Kretis came over there. Pushed out by Drew Walker, Jr. from Carrollton, Texas. Bugs with a throw in. All 10 field players in the defensive half for Southern. Now maybe time to just get just leave a few forward, right? Maybe just tell Lonnie Mulligan just go stand in right wing area and just similar to what Texas Southern did yesterday with their their forward players. Just you don't need to go back defensively. Just we want to get the ball and get the the ball into your area and have you run go and sh turn in defense into attack as fast as possible. Yeah, we're down three goals. Let's defend with seven. Attack with three and see how Grambling responds. Well, you, you saw a little bit of that um, UAPB yesterday. They they had three very offensive players, didn't they? And it was end to end at, at, at what, uh, well, for a large majority of that game. So someone just needs to do similar to that. Thrown on the far side of the field. Deja Griffin in the corner. Good defending. Grambling's been excellent defensively tonight. Yes, Adriana Pratt again, isn't it? She just seems to get, always being, whenever there's the, la the attacker's getting onto the last player, she always seems to be that one across covering and clearing any danger before it, before it happens. Slight flick on the header. Southern trying to find space. Good defending again. Many will point to the three goals scored by Grambling, but the defensive effort has been just as good. Right. To the end line. Excellent dribbling show, but there's too many white shirts. It's been team defending all night from Grambling. There's three white shirts there near the corner to deny that cross. Yeah, it's literally what I mentioned earlier. Um, Adrian Pratt, she's always covering, but they do. They've, they've always got. If I'm, an, if one defender is going to get beat, there's going to be a defender behind me to, to snap in and tackle. Always cover. Corner so, kick. That's that's what half the battle in defending is. Is when one person's committed, you just need the person behind them to, to cover in case. And that Grambling State have done that really well. Corner kick here with 31 minutes left. Towards the near post, and it's headed out. Top of the box, a settling touch. Good closeout. Uh -huh. Driven wide of the goal. It was deflected. It's out for another southern corner kick. There you go. This is the, the, the little bit of pressure that Southern really needs, isn't it? They can grab a goal. And when in this pressure, the game, the game's changes, doesn't it, completely. It was Miramar Mesa. The long distance shot deflected out for a corner kick. Victoria Thomas, sophomore from New Orleans, delivers from the corner. And they're just moving as a unit. Everywhere we see getting their line up, Working back defensively, it's the 10 field players working in unison for Grambling. 
Do you know where where that comes from though? And I think you can see as the game goes on, it's, it comes from Pratt. What? Oh, it's such a strong tackle. Pratt is just talking all game long. I mentioned it in the broadcast yesterday. Just you can hear her talking all the time. But when the ball's getting cleared, it's her that's saying out with me. We're all in a line. She's just constantly talking. Oh no! A bad giveaway just over the bar. Nearly a fourth for Grambling. It was Beatrice Kretis looking for her second of the night. I tell you, if there was one person you want the ball to fall to, it's Kretis, isn't it? I just can't believe she's not put this ball hasn't ended in the back of the net. Came from the goalkeeper, Sydney Bellamy. She brought it back in her own area, tried to play a short pass, poor giveaway, and Kretis off the mark. Yeah, just a little bit of rush of blood to the head from the goalkeeper, wasn't it? Sydney Bellamy, just not the greatest clearance, and Southern very lucky to not be completely out of it now. Grambly back in possession in midfield. Goal kick here for Sydney Bellamy, sophomore from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Grambling just squeezing the life out of this game, minute by minute, it feels like. Comprehensive yeah, showing. Very comprehensive, but I think Southern have been much better in the second half. A lot more threatening than we saw them having two two corners in, in succession a minute ago. But you do just get the you get the feeling when you, you talk to the coach and you talk to these players, they've just got a culture where they're just used to grinding out the results in these kind of games. Clipped over the top. Out for another throw in. A little bit weary in there for Deja Griffin. She kind of innocuously just ran over to the sideline. I think she's jarred her knee a little bit. She's struggling there. Limping right in front of us in midfield. Yeah, it's one of those where you've not been kicked. It's, it's a little bit worrying. And it's good referee in there, to be honest. Alyssa Romero, her rival. For Grambling, checked on her, asked her how she was doing. Yeah, the only reason I noticed it is right in front of me, and she just, she, it was just very, very innocu innocuous. Innocuous is that? Innocuous. An innocu innocuous. No L on the back end. <laughs> innocuous. That's not when you get, you get injections. Oh, yeah. That's called inoculation. <laughs> oh, I apologize for all the people out there having to listen to this. Hey, six games in two days. Yeah. The players. No rest for the weary, no rest for us either. Deja Griffin will limp off. I have to say the two games today though have been a pleasure to watch. I think the tempo's been much higher, it's been a lot more attacking football and full credit to the, the ladies because it's the second game in two days, it could get sloppy, it could get, the tired legs could take over but both games have been really good to watch. In the first semifinal earlier today, Jackson State, the number one seed, beat Texas Southern. Two nothing. Alexis Sanchez, 43rd minute goal. More of a cross than a shot, but it found its way all the way into the back of the net. Kalia Uehara with the second goal that came in the 67th minute. Deserved win for Jackson State. Now a chance. Good pressure off the bench. Kyra Reeves just in the match. She commits a foul. Reeves just replaced Deja Griffin and nearly had a chance on the right edge of the box. Yeah, she was a good run, wasn't it? But it was the same thing. I just mentioned her numerous times. Andrea on a part, part again coming across and covering. She just does that so well. And then you, you have the pace of Bugs next to her. Defensively, this ground stays so hard to get past. Adriana Pratt, first team all-conference for Grambling State. Beatrice Kretsch is also first team all-conference. Carolyn Judge and Imogen Fowler, four players in first team all-conference for the SWAC. 
Samantha Diaz also named to the second team. Courtney Armstrong, Lonnie Mulligan, Anaya Clark, each part of the first team. We have seven of the first team players on the field tonight between Southern and Grambling. Lombardi. Sydney Bellamy, also a second team pick, the goalkeeper for Southern. Cross from the right, headed away. Good pressure here from the Jaguars. Surya Nero, Magnolia, Texas native, good pressure on this near sideline. It was, a, it was Aria Whitney again, wasn't it, running with pace. I think she's had a very, very good game. She's shown loads of energy on the left-hand side, like a traditional left winger, loads of pace, trying to run at defenders. An old description for you, Andrew Driver? An old, old left winger. What do you mean, an old description? Loads of pace, like to run at defenders. Yeah, you've got to think of like going back in the day, and then we're going back a little bit now because I am getting old. Like a Ryan Giggs sort of player. Southern goes to the bench. Victoria Thomas gets a break. Replaced by Ashante Gatlin, junior from San Diego. We had a little fun. Someone found the old FIFA rankings for you during your Houston Dynamo days in 2013. Overall rating for Andrew Driver in that video game was a 67. <laughs> you think that was a fair score? That's no idea. <laughs> Probably. They, they break the skills into individual categories. Your highest rating was your speed at 75. Your lowest rating, 37, for your skill in the air. Skill in the air, a.k.a. bravery. So I've never, <laughs> never been brave a day in my life. Well, yeah, it's, it's quite funny going back to that. Shooting at 63, passing 63, dribbling 68. The, the only problem is it was out of a 1,000. Yeah. <laughs> Marking at 55. This one's interesting. 47, I think that's short for tactical awareness, TAC. Tackling. Oh, tackling. <laughs> tactic. <laughs> that goes down to bravery again. Yeah. <laughs> and then what's REA? R R Reaction. Reaction. <laughs> Long throw. We have fun with Andrew Driver. Here's a turn, and it's clear. Long professional career. Scotland, the United States, and the Netherlands. Matt Statter as the wind picks up. <laughs> Back to midfield. <laughs> <I'm drinking>. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's braved my poor jokes and my weather updates throughout the six matches in the last two days. I tell you, the, the, it has been windy this weekend, but I'll take it over last year. Last yes. year was so cold up on the, the Prairie View Hill. The wind was whipping in, but it was a cold wind. It's Are been actually, like in relative terms, it's been pleasantly nice, hasn't it, this weekend? Oh, we were desperate. We had about an hour break between the first and second match on the first day. We hustled to the nearest big box retailer and wasted way too much money on thermal underwear, gloves, <laughs> and beanies. Looked absolutely ridiculous checking out. But it was, it was like in the 30s or 40s here last year on the first day of the quarterfinals. Throwing far side. Got the, the Jag support now trying to get them into the game. It's still not too late, 20 minutes. We've seen, we've seen team score three and 20 minutes in the past, but it's getting to the stage where Southern has to get something in the next couple of minutes. Short restart for Southern.
Nice touch. Away from pressure. Well done there from Courtney Armstrong. Top of the area for the Jaguars. Overlapping run, Alayla Jackson. Jackson in the middle, it falls, top of the area, hard challenge, edge of the box. Free kick is given. Yellow card will be shown here. Ashante Gatlin just barreling into the box. Yellow card though. You could argue she was not playing the ball. Maybe a little jersey yeah, tug and a little push after. A wee bit of push at the end, wasn't it? Yeah, good refereeing, actually. I'll take that back, sir. Sorry. Hey, it's a rivalry match. It is a rivalry match. That you have to remember that. There's always going to be situations like that. It did. It did earlier on get start getting a little bit testy on this byline. I know there's a couple of toes being stepped on, so. In a rivalry game, those kind of things are always just happening. They're just, it just simmers under the surface a little bit, doesn't it? And I think if you're Southern, you like to see that. If you're a fan of them, if you're a, a coach, they're not giving up. They're pushing for a goal. They're not looking at the scoreboard saying we have 20 minutes left in our season. It's the same in the Texas Southern game earlier, wasn't it? They got tested in the last 10 minutes because Texas Southern were desperate to get back into the game. Just... Um, putting everything in to get to get that goal that can help you get back and try regain the lead <laughs> not the lead regain something it's regain <laughs> pride yeah. <laughs> it has been a long few days all we want from Andrew is a complete sentence <laughs> <laughs> here in the second half Hey, by the way, peeking ahead to Sunday, this match is not over yet, but worth looking ahead. Grambling and Jackson State play to a scoreless draw, and they're only meeting this year. Southern trying to stage a miraculous comeback, down three goals in the second half. Free kick is given right on the outside of the area. Father consulting son there. <laughs> brother consulting brother. Chance no though for Armstrong to put this into the dangerous area. Southern need need to get something off this. Sean Cowett, the head referee, assistant referee on the near sideline. Wes Cowett. Courtney Armstrong will deliver. Is, is Cowett a Louisiana name? Has to be. Sounds like it would be, right? An all Louisiana affair today, tonight. It's a French name. Cowet is a type of bird native to France. What are we waiting on here? They're going to look at the replay this to make sure it was not inside oh. the area. So video replay is in effect for a few moments. Did the ball cross the line on a near goal? Was a foul given inside or outside the box? Not every rule can be reviewed. This is one. I think he's made the right decision. I do think it was outside the box. This is the one problem with VAR, isn't it? For all of the, the good things it brings the delay in the game look at the, the ladies are stood here for 10 5 10 minutes just waiting for the game to go on it just it spoils the flow of things five or ten minutes a bit of exaggeration uh, just a, a fraction yeah <laughs> but it feels like a long yes, time maybe when you a minute game, or two right? <laughs> <laughs> we're here to exaggerate hey, hey, andrew if you're questioning my my weatherman skills i'm questioning <laughs> your timekeeping <laughs> Hope you don't have a. We're here to, to hope talk you don't about have the a game, but we have to exaggerate yeah. the game. I hope you don't have a body alarm. You have a real alarm to wake <laughs> you up in the morning. I genuinely think he's decided this because it, it was close to the video room, so it was a quick. 
He's put the headset on. He's looking at multiple replays. He's taking the headset off and he's coming out of the video room. As the rain pours down on the hill. It will be given outside the area. No penalty, it's a free kick for Southern. Right near the 10 yard marker. Well, I do think there was a second bit of contact. They just wanted to make sure the foul actually occurred outside the area because there was two defenders there. Andrew doesn't look too convinced. I think he made the right decision first hand. Here's the free kick for Southern to the back post, headed and clear. Free header for Miramar Mesa. Throwing near the corner flag. 18 minutes left for Southern to pull three goals back. Clip from the left. Out to midfield. Into the box, slightly too far in front for Kyra Reeves. Reeves from Austin, a transfer from Missouri. Punted away by Madison Covey Taylor. One change here. Imogen Fowler gets a break. Nick Alvarez returns, the freshman from El Cajon, California. Another change for Grambling. Alyssa Goodlow has come on, junior from Beaumont, California. Good hustle from Southern. She's been active all night, that's Kari Price. Courtney Armstrong, excellent. Good effort, sliding challenge there from Lisbeth Aguero. Missed half the year with shin splints, but full effort there. Yeah, good positive play from Anaya Clark as well though, wasn't it? Driven into ball. the wind, it's just over the header. The same, and put the in! What a spectacular finish, Southern has a lifeline. How did she finish from that angle? Life in the stands and on the southern sideline. I think it was Carrie Prince coming into the back post. It was a great ball for my Armstrong all the way up into the back post. I thought it was going to get hit on the first time. It bounced. And how Prince managed to get that with a left foot volley back over the goalkeeper and into the net is beyond me. What a goal. What a great ball for Armstrong. She did one exactly that Carpe copied that last night. It was, it went all the way up. I think it was Kyra Reeves who was first in there. And then Prince just with like a loopy left. A uh, carry Prince, Price, sorry, yeah. Carry Price with a, a looping left footed volley into the top of the net. And you just feel the energy jump into this building. Kari Price, what a goal. I thought once it went past the post, there was no chance, but she got inside bugs to score. 
her first goal of the season. A great goal though, so well taken, right? It just shows you when you get those opportunities, you don't need to really hit the ball hard, just guide it towards the goal and you can, you'll can you be rewarded. Kari Price, first goal of the season, Southern now trailing 3-1 with 15 minutes to go. Off to the left, over the top, headed out. Plenty of time for Southern. Well, 15 minutes is plenty of time. Yes. And you've, you've seen the momentum just shift. The, the Grambling State, who defensively has been so sure of themselves all game, now having maybe second guessing themselves when the ball is getting into the box. Free kick to Grambling State. Grambling leading 3-1. It's on here for Southern at midfield. Grambling, scrambling back. Very good. Space in the middle of the field. Tina Arner's daughter, the Icelandic midfielder. Back to Sydney Bellamy. Rolled out to this near sideline. Courtney Armstrong peeks ahead. Good, Armstrong. Good for Bellamy, though. Gets the ball first thing in the mind. Let's go. You just see that the, the Southern have just upped the tempo. That little, that touch, they feel they've got a chance again. Like, they've got a chance here. It's not over yet. Free kick to Southern. Diagonal switch of fields. Price, good hold up play. Arner's daughter. Dangerous, she tried to let it roll out. It's a corner kick, the wind kept it in. Gambling on letting that ball try to go over the end line. Yes, Reeves again just getting herself into the box. It was good play from Southern. They're just playing the numbers, playing into good areas. And you see here another corner. Corner kick to Southern with 12 minutes to go. I think Kyra Reeves was trying to play around the, the flag there. Oh. That's going to hang up there in the oh, wind. Oh. It will be challenged and handled. Madison Covey Taylor. You were talking about the corner flag. Would you like her to place it on the other side of the you flag? Place it on next the other side, you get the run up. She was just making herself so difficult. You couldn't get a run up, and that's why she didn't only hit it to the first, the first defender. You need to get a little bit of run on to get pace onto it. Flag stays down. Good cover from Armstrong. She gets there before Elizabeth Aguero. More changes here for Grambling. Layla Lauren goes to the bench. Elizabeth Aguero as well. I think half of that is maybe the sign that Coach Wager maybe seen that the tide turn a little bit. Southern coming into the game. Beatrice Kretis returns. Aria Whitney as well. And a change for Southern at the same time. Surya Nero departs. Bryn Hill back on for Southern.
Bryn Hill, senior from DeSoto, Texas. Tough decision there, she concedes the corner kick. Ten and a half minutes left, they will play it short. At least I thought they would. I spoke too soon. <laughs> Driven to a dangerous spot. All the way through to Bugs. Wonderful from Bugs to keep it in play. And then she runs out of room. So shot. Without the win, she's, she's probably in on goal. Ten minutes left for Southern. Down 3-1. Another change. Imogen Fowler returns. She replaces Alyssa Goodlow. Dink to a good spot. It's on here for the Jaguars. She's in the box. Crossing. Oh, unfortunate she slipped. The goal scorer, Kari Price. Huge chunk of grass comes up. And a player down for Grambling behind the play around the penalty spot. Uh, really, it comes from the effort from Kyra Reeves again, wasn't it? Pace down into the right hand side, just a little bit too much on the cross, but really good play again. It was Alyssa Goodlow trying to deny the cross, did well, but there was some contact on the edge of the box, and then she went down behind the play. She has that knee brace on. It looked like a little bit of a jar, didn't it, when they were sprinting for the ball. Hopefully it's just nothing serious, just maybe a little bit of a, a bruise. Nine and a half minutes remain. The second semifinal. We'll take a commercial break here on the SWAC Digital Network. Welcome back to the Prairie View AM Soccer Complex. Alyssa Goodlow helped off the fields. A restart now. Three to one, Southern leading. A Grambling leading, I beg your pardon. Grambling leading Southern three to one. Free kick here. The score holds will be the first ever SWAC championship final between Grambling and Jackson State. Jackson State is in the final for the first time since 2013. Winning tonight 2 0 against Texas Southern. Here's the restart from Southern. Cleared. That might fall its way through. It's in the box. Shot is blocked. Eight and a half minutes left. Throw in for Southern. More excellent work rate from Kari Price on the far side of the field. Junior from Phoenix, Arizona.
Grambling has all 10 field players within 30 yards of their own goal. Tough angle once again. That's where Price scored from. Nearly a second for Southern with eight minutes left. Outside of the right, pretty cheeky finish there from Alayla Jackson. Nice soft touch there. Diagonal doesn't quite make it wide enough. Excellent ball, but Bugs is there. Her clearance out for a throw on the far side of the field. Seven minutes left for Southern. Armstrong draws two. Armstrong Good breaks look. through. Ratstad are over. Deep throwing for Southern. Relentless from Courtney Armstrong. She had, she had two on her the whole way, but it's just pure determination, wasn't it, to get down. All she had on her mind is get the space to get the cross in, but throwing just as good. Long throw in, headed out. Now the corner. Corner kick to Southern. Six and a half minutes left. Here's the delivery. Towards the spot, knocked down. And out for a throw in. Corner kick came, Alayla Jackson. Junior from Jackson, Mississippi. Throw in. Six minutes left. It bounces well, inside the goal area. Pops up near the spot and it's clear by Ratstatter. It's amazing how many times we've seen balls like that go into the box, look dangerous, and just we haven't seen any goals from them yet where they've been going across the goal like that. Oh, flicked on, well timed from Credis. It's a foot race here. Monique Alvarez, run down, excellent hustle from Victoria Thomas. Five minutes remain. Yeah, it looked like Alvarez was away there, wasn't it? But very good work to get back by Victoria Thomas to clear it. But yeah, exciting this one, hasn't it? Last 30 minutes. Adriana Pratt returns, replacing Reese Scott for Grambling. Quarter kick to Grambling. Dangerous to the back post. It falls top of the area, first time back on goal and blocked. Now the Jaguars try and break. Four and a half minutes yes. left. Victoria Thomas with the switch of fields. Bugs is there to head away. Clever back heel there. Life for the Jaguars with four minutes to go. Excellent diagonal ball. Look who's sprinting to run it down. The goal scorer, Kari Price. First time delivery, hangs in the air. Out for a Southern throw in. Price looks a little winded. She's been running all night on that far side. Thrown in, back to the thrower, to the corner. Cross is denied, throw in Southern. Go, 
Bug steps up. Into the box, it's gonna bounce near the goal. And it's picked up, Madison Covey Taylor. Defender blocking the area. Make the path a little more difficult. Okay, that was, um, it was Drew Walker. No, Alyssa Romero. She uh, just used a very smart one. She just put her body in the right position, protected a goalkeeper. Sealed off Kyra Reeves. Under three minutes left, Southern needs two goals. Into the corner, Alayla Jackson pushed, stays on her feet. Jackson crosses, clear. Unable to keep it in play. Best effort there from Courtney Armstrong. Two minutes left to Prairie View. Brad Statter. Out for a goal kick. Desperate times for Southern. Sydney Bellamy will restart. Headed towards the corner. Credis fighting. She might go to the corner. Support from Imogen Fowler. Rambling throw it. One minute left on the hill. Tansy Villasis throws it in. The Baton Rouge native. Another throw in. Clock ticking down on the season for Southern. What a season it was though. Ending in great form. Nine wins. Five unbeaten before tonight. Four wins and a draw to finish the year before this tough ending against a rival in Grambling. 15 seconds left, Andrew, put a bow on the season for the Southern Jaguars. Oh, well, if they performed like they did in the second half, they would have had a chance in the game. Grambling just dominant in the first half and it was just too little, too late for Southern Jaguars. I thought they, in the first game yesterday, they were outstanding, just didn't have the luck in this game tonight. And for Grambling State, they're back where they expect to be in the SWAC Women's Soccer Championship. For the fourth time in five years, Grambling State will fight for the championship. The last three journeys have ended there with a penalty defeat. They get a chance against Jackson State on Sunday at 1 p.m. And your thoughts on that championship match? Oh, it's gonna be a good one, isn't it? Grambling State, I think, showed this, after, this evening the quality they have. Yesterday maybe let themselves down a little bit, but they won the game. Jackson State, we've seen them not, not let a goal in in the tournament. They, they are a team to beat. So it should be a very, very good final. 1 p.m. Sunday, Grambling State trying to break through. Grambling State has not won the title since 2006. They beat Mississippi Valley State in the final that season. For Jackson State looking for its first championship since 2013. They beat Alabama State on that day. 1 p.m. Sunday, the number one seed Jackson State against the number two seed Grambling State for the automatic berth in the NCAA tournaments. Tonight, it was dominant from Grambling. Goals in the 14th minute, Mackenzie Radstatter. In the 18th minute, Beatrice Credis and Nia Harley with their first touch of the game right off the bench in the 27th minute. A goal from Southern back from Kari Price, full effort at the back post in the 74th minute. We'll be back with you on Sunday, one o'clock on the SWAC Digital Network for the championship match. Top C Jackson State 
against number two seed Grambling State. For our entire crew and Andrew Driver, Matt Peterson saying good night from Prairie View. Final score, Grambling three, Southern one. We'll be back with you on Sunday for the championship match. You're watching. Good nights.